Let's compare the all new OnePlus Pad to Apple's 10th generation iPad. Welcome everybody, welcome to Apple Insider, it is Andrew here. OnePlus, known for making some excellent Android handsets, is trying their hand at making a tablet. This is the all new OnePlus Pad, and it is a, honestly a gorgeous tablet, especially for the price point, and at its price point, it is put up squarely against Apple's 10th generation iPad. So this is the newest one, the 9th generation is technically still available, but the 10th generation is what we're gonna be comparing in this video. So let's go ahead, break these down, look at the difference in specs and performance, and which one you should probably end up buying. Let's start off looking at the displays. Apple is using a 10.9 inch IPS liquid retina display on the new iPad. It's got sRGB color support, 500 nits of brightness, true tone, and an oleophobic coating, which can help repel those fingerprints. The OnePlus Pad, on the other hand, has a slightly larger display, measuring in at 11.61 inches as an LCD screen that offers 500 nits of brightness and 10-bit true color, a 144 refresh rate, hertz refresh rate, and a contrast ratio of 1400 to 1. Specifically, you want to call out that ridiculous refresh rate that's far above the 60 hertz refresh rate available on this entry-level iPad. Aside from just being a larger display, it also has a different aspect ratio. Apple is using a 3 by 4 aspect ratio on the iPad, whereas the OnePlus Pad has a 7 by 5 aspect ratio. This is a really nice display. I mean, Apple is no slouch when it comes to displays, but this thing looks great. I mean, I don't mind the aspect ratio. This actually feels like a phenomenal aspect ratio. I love the rounded corners, same as on Apple's, but this also has a much higher pixel density. So Apple has a pixel density of 264. This has a pixel density of 295 PPI, far more than Apple's iPad. Honestly, this is just a very pretty display to look at and to use, to read on. Everything just simply looks crisp and sharp and vibrant. I really like this display, and I don't say that about a ton of Android tablets. Let's talk about the physical appearance. The OnePlus Pad has a great look and feel, especially for a mid-level tablet like this. It's got an all metal body that's got this cool coloring around the back. It's like this hunter green, forest green color. It's the only color that it actually comes in at launch. The rear camera is centered there along the back. The front facing camera is also centered. The edges are all rounded, which feel very nice in the hand. Technically, this tablet is larger than the iPad is uh, in basically all dimensions, but it's a little bit thinner, and it feels a lot thinner in the hand because of those curves. So specifically between the two, you feel like you're using a lot smaller, lighter tablet with the OnePlus Pad compared to the iPad because this still has those rounded off or squared off edges. Uh, aside from that, I very much like the look of this. I think this is a fantastic looking tablet. The 10th gen iPad, on the other hand, has a new refresh look and feel. It's more akin to the iPad Air and the iPad Pros, as it finally got a new redesign going from the 9th to the 10th generation. If we move on, let's talk about the internals. Apple is using the A14 Bionic in its 10th generation iPad. That chipset also includes the GPU and a 16 core neural engine. The OnePlus Pad, on the other hand, is using a MediaTek Dimensity 9000 for the CPU and an ARM Mali G710 MC10 GPU. Let's talk about the performance of those chips with the latest Geekbench 6. Apple's A14 Bionic process performs admirably with over a 2000 single core score. The multi core score was even higher at 4473. When we compare that to the OnePlus Pad, it had a 1259 for the single core and a 3199 for the multi-core. It's a solid multi-core score, but that single core score is a little bit lacking. That said, for daily tasks, I didn't notice much of a difference between the two in just using them. Opening apps, reading, social media, hopping on Twitter, um, making quick edits for photos, everything felt pretty on par between the two tablets. I think it'll be more important the longevity of the tablets. I mean, when you're starting off a little bit lower, it's gonna have a shorter lifespan, especially when Android is a little bit more taxing on those processors. So I think it could be a little bloaty and may not have as long of a lifespan as Apple's is with its own A14 Bionic and iPad OS. Apple offers the 10th generation iPad in two different configurations for storage. So there's a 64 gig or a 100 and sorry, Apple offers two storage configurations for the 10th generation iPad. 
you can opt for the 64 gig as the base model or 256 for the stepped up model. On the other hand, the OnePlus Pad only comes in one storage size. You can only get this in 128 gigs. So kind of like a catch 22, both of these have flaws because Apple is starting off with a lot less storage, which I hate. But on the other hand, the OnePlus Pad doesn't give you a higher storage option. So if 128 isn't enough, there is no 256 or higher for you to choose. You're stuck with the 128 that they provide. Finally, the OnePlus Pad has uh, biometrics for authentication. There's like a face unlock feature. The iPad, on the other hand, uses Touch ID built into the sleep wake button. Now, I will say that this face unlock they're using here is basically just a photo of your face that they compare to previous known photos of your face. It's not the same 3D scan that Face ID uses, so it's not nearly as secure. If you're looking for the most security, Touch ID, or I would recommend like the full alphanumeric passcode on the OnePlus Pad, the face unlock is just not gonna do it. But around your house, there's nothing wrong with using face unlock to protect your tablet. Let's talk about the cameras. Apple has a 12 megapixel rear facing camera. It's got five times digital zoom, capable of 4K video at up to 60 frames per second, or slow mo 1080 at 240 frames per second. The front facing camera is also a 12 megapixel, but it is an ultra wide lens, keeping really wide so you can take those FaceTime calls, zoom calls, whatever it may be. And the front facing one is also capable of 1080p at 60 frames per second. The OnePlus Pad has a rear facing 13 megapixel camera and that's actually a little bit larger than Apple's, but it can still only record 4K video at 30 frames per second. The front facing camera is an eight megapixel camera located here on the center. It is capable of 1080p video, but at only 30 frames per second, whereas Apple is offering you up to 60. Now both Apple and OnePlus have their own features that will help keep you in frame. Apple calls their center stage, and as you move around, you'll always be kept in frame. OnePlus is offering something similar called Limelight, that again, just use that ultra-wide lens to always make sure uh, you are in frame when you're taking a Zoom call, calling in for classwork, whatever it is, but I really like the feature on both of these two tablets. For connectivity, both tablets support Wi-Fi 6. Bluetooth is a little bit better on the OnePlus Pad, but they're both in the Bluetooth 4 family, so that's a huge difference in terms of peripheral connectivity. Where Apple wins out is with cellular, so this entry level model is just Wi-Fi only, but if you do need cellular, OnePlus Pad does not have that option. You can only get cellular on the 10th generation iPad between these two devices. For most people, I think it makes sense just to tether these to your phone instead or a 5G hotspot. You don't need to pay for another cellular plan dedicated for your tablet, but there are use cases, especially in uh, the workplace, where it makes sense to have that connectivity directly on the tablet, and Apple's the only one between these two that will give you that option. Both of these use USB-C on the bottom to charge and to connect different accessories to, and they each have their own version of little connectors to magnetically connect to other accessories. So Apple's is called the Smart Connector. There are three little dots located there on the side and you can connect it to the Magic Keyboard and, and use it in all that ways. The OnePlus Pad, similar three little dots that can magnetically connect to folio cases, stuff like that, that works very similar. Both these can support styluses. There's the stylo on the OnePlus Pad that will magnetically connect to the side uh, to wirelessly charge uh, thousands of degrees of sensitivity on there, super nice. Apple on the other hand supports Apple Pencil, which is also very nice. Except that it's the, the first generation Apple Pencil with lightning and, and you need to use a weird lightning to USB-C adapter to charge it and it's awful. It's all, everyone knows it's awful. It's awful, Apple. Why? It's bad. It's bad on the other iPads. Just, it's here, it's a little embarrassing. But you at least have Apple Pencil support on here and stylus support on the OnePlus Pad. In terms of audio, there is stereo audio on the OnePlus Pad. There are four speakers, one located in each corner, kind of how Apple does the iPad Pro setups. The iPad, on the other hand, there's four actually like speaker vents, but there's only two speakers in here. Um, so it doesn't really give even great stereo performance. It's just not quite the same. Watching some videos, listening to music, it's, it's a lot better on the OnePlus Pad than it is on the iPad. iPad's not bad, but it's definitely better on the OnePlus Pad with four dedicated speakers. So where does this leave us in the end between these two devices? Which do we like more? The best part about this is that the OnePlus Pad is 
is great. Like this is no slouch of a tablet. And if you are looking for a solid Android tablet, I have no qualms in recommending this. Heck, this is probably what I would recommend first right now for people who are looking for an Android tablet, unless they want to be like in a Samsung ecosystem or something like that. For your general person, this would be it right now. The iPad though is in Apple's ecosystem. So if you're an iPhone user or a Mac user, I'm going to recommend going the iPad route because of iOS and iPadOS integrations. It makes more sense. But whatever you choose, I wanna know about it. Let me know down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. There are links to purchase both of these in the description. Otherwise, stay tuned. I have a lot more videos heading your way.